G'day folks, it's time to talk about thermodynamics and this is the topic for our pre-lecture snapshot video number three. In this snapshot video we're going to talk about um, a lot of terminology I guess which is associated with the topic of thermodynamics. We won't go into too much of the nitty gritty and chew on much of the mathematics but I should point out from the get-go that there will be a lot of maths throughout the topic of thermodynamics. But for the time being, let's just focus on some terminology. I'm going to introduce the idea of a state function and a path function. And all of these things are represented by symbols, so we'll take a look at some of these. Distinguish with respect to chemical reactions the idea of an exothermic reaction or an endothermic reaction. I'm going to introduce very briefly calorimetry, the idea of measuring the change in energy. We'll distinguish between heat and temperature. And then towards the end, we'll really quickly introduce the terminology and the idea of enthalpy, entropy, and then finally Gibbs free energy, which is really the end point and the most important point to get to in this topic of thermodynamics. The Gibbs free energy tells us whether or not a reaction is going to be spontaneous or not. First of all, what is thermodynamics? In very simple terms, thermodynamics is the study of the energy of a system. So as I mentioned, there are a handful of terms that you should be aware of, and most of these also have a symbol. We'll take a look at a few throughout this video. The internal energy is the first one. It actually has the symbol of U. We often, or most commonly, talk about the change in the energy of a system. So more often than not, you won't be talking about a direct measurement of U, but a change in the value of U, or a change in the internal energy. And you'll see that these other state functions here of enthalpy, entropy, and Gibbs free energy are all expressed in a similar sort of fashion. Like pressure, temperature, and volume, the internal energy is a state function. State functions have unique values once the state of the system is defined. This means that a change in the internal energy depends only on the initial and final states of the system and is independent of the path connecting the states. You often see this analogy being drawn, such as trying to travel from Dunedin and Darwin and possibly taking four different paths. It's true, of course, to say that no matter which path you take, the distance between Dunedin and Darwin is always the same. Another example might be that a system is at 10 degrees, it heats up to 30 degrees, and then it cools back down to 20 degrees. We would say that delta T is 10, increased from 10 to 20, even though it went all the way up to 30 and then cooled down to 20. We'd still say that delta T is 10 degrees. State functions always behave in this fashion. And here's a long list of them, temperature, volume, pressure. You've heard about these when we talked about things like the ideal gas equation. Here are a few more that you should be aware of. Internal energy, enthalpy, entropy, and Gibbs energy. In contrast to internal energy and other state functions, functions like heat and work have no meaning in an equilibrium state and are observed only as consequences of a particular process of change. The separate values of heat and work are not predictable from delta U, only the sum. They depend on the way the change occurs, and thus these are a different kind of function. We call these path functions. Path functions perhaps are analogous to the details of the roots in the navigation between Dunedin and Darwin that we talked about before. While the point of the departure and of course the destination are more like state functions. Perhaps that analogy works well for you. Two more terms that you should be very familiar with with the topic of third dynamics are the system and the surroundings. They're extremely important in thermodynamics. The system, of course, we're talking about chemistry, so the system might be the chemical reaction and the chemicals involved in that chemical reaction. The system and the surroundings are separated by what we call the boundary, and the system and the surroundings together are basically the entire universe. An example might be you're performing a chemical reaction in a beaker, 
or the system would be the chemicals inside the beaker. And the beaker and the rest of the universe make up the surroundings. If we have a look at this chemical reaction here, which is actually in a conical flask, we can see that there are two possible scenarios taking place when a chemical reaction occurs. On the left hand side we have something which is called an exothermic reaction. When that reaction takes place it actually generates heat. Heat is lost from the system and it moves towards the surroundings and in fact the surroundings if you like absorb that heat. This is what's known as an exothermic reaction. Of course the opposite can take place you can have an endothermic reaction so for example dissolving ammonium nitrate in water is an endothermic reaction the water actually cools down when that takes place and heat is transferred from the surroundings to the system this is an endothermic reaction calorimetry is used to measure these changes in energy I'll draw your attention as well to, you can see in the two graphs, there is some reference to delta H, delta H of the reaction. Notice that for an exothermic reaction, delta H is less than zero. For an endothermic reaction, delta H is greater than zero. More about H, which is known as enthalpy, during lectures. I also just want to make a quick comment uh, distinguishing between these two ideas of temperature and heat. You know, when the weather is really hot, we say, you know, how about this heat? You know, what we're really saying is, man, the temperature is really high today. But uh, we often confuse these two ideas of temperature and heat, or perhaps we're not confusing them. But I think in common language, we use these two terms interchangeably. In thermodynamics, they're not the same thing. Let's distinguish between the two. Temperature is a scale which may be used to indicate degrees of hot and cold. When two objects are at different temperatures, they transfer heat. That is, heat will flow from the hotter to the cooler body. In other words, heat is the energy that transfers from a hotter uh, to a cooler object in this process. Temperature, as you guys know, is measured in kelvins. Heat is energy. And energy, of course, is measured in joules. So temperature and heat are not the same thing. So just going back to some of these state functions that we introduced earlier, we have enthalpy, entropy, and Gibbs free energy. We'll talk more about those in lectures. In an approximate sort of way, you can think of enthalpy as being as corresponding to the heat absorbed or released by a chemical reaction. Entropy is a different idea. Entropy corresponds to the degree of disorder in a chemical system. More about that in lectures once again. But enthalpy and entropy are inherently linked to one another by something called the Gibbs free energy. Unlike enthalpy or change in enthalpy, the Gibbs free energy is highly temperature dependent. And using the equation you can see here, the change in the Gibbs free energy is related to both the enthalpy and the entropy. And there's a temperature term in that equation as well. The free energy combines these two things to give a measure of the spontaneity of the process and of the useful energy available from it. The one thing that you should remember is for a reaction to be spontaneous, delta G should be less than zero. Well, anyway, that brings us to the end of this pre-lecture video. And all of the answers to the quiz are somewhere throughout that conversation we just had very briefly introducing the topic of thermodynamics. Go to your Moodle page, click on the pre-lecture quiz number three link, and attempt the online quiz. You only get one attempt, but remember it's untimed and you've got a week to do it. Good luck.